It's been like interesting for the last couple of months, to be honest, uh, weeks. Um, it feels like being pregnant, uncomfortable. You might say, oh, so what, is it, what you know about being pregnant? I don't know nothing about being pregnant as a woman. But I know about being pregnant is in birth is something yes, in the spirit. Yes, Amen. Yes, yes. And um, you know, sometimes I get the opportunity to you know talk to people and women who've been pregnant and they get through those they go to those stages of being uncomfortable, ready for something to be birthed, ready for that life to be birthed. Amen. Amen. And I know that um it's like I'm, God has a brother in this place where it's like I'm ready to, to give birth to, and God has just been giving me revelation to understand. Look, look at myself, know what time it is. Know what time it is. And season. And season. And season. And season. And season. We need to know what God is doing. Amen? Amen? We need to know, the church needs to know what God is doing in this time and season. Um, Interesting what God was talking to me about. I wrote something on Facebook. I'm going to read it, you know, because it has to do with what God wants to talk about tonight. It says, you know, family, church. Everybody say church family. Church family. Say church family. Church family. How many of No, we say family, church, and then there's, we say church family. What's interesting, that's interesting about church family because sometimes people define church family just by the church they go to. Amen? We will define, some people define church family by the color of the skin of the church they go to. Some people define church family by what they relate to. Amen? But I know God wants to do some, I'm going to use a word that's interesting tonight, some training. Let's say training. Train. And, and people have many different ways to define church. And, but I know that God wants it to be defined as family. Amen? That we are we are family. Now everybody say shift. shift. And I, I want to take you to where Jesus shifted. Cause see, a lot of times I have people they come to me and they talk to me about um you know especially Exodus and uh, uh, Deuteronomy and they talk about the Hebrew and they, which is good and they talk about the Jews which is good. And, but we need to understand that Jesus shifted. Amen. He shifted everything. And I think the worst thing to do is be in in a time when you don't understand that he shifted. You know what I'm saying? That, because that means if you're not in a time where he shifted, if you're still trying to look to the old to find who you are in the new. Amen? You're trying to find your family in the old. People are trying to find their family in the old when Jesus shifted it to the new. And I want to go where Christ took me this. And I, want, and I, I, I wrote it like this. Family church, comma, church family. Dysfunction in the family, dysfunction in the church. Amen? So if the family is dysfunction, if there's dysfunction in the family, then there's going to be dysfunction in the church. Amen? Oh, some of y'all don't understand what I'm saying. You're going to get this before we over tonight. There can be dysfunction in the family. In other words, I could have been trained a certain way in the family that when I get into the church, that has caused me to look at the church and the way God does things in a manner of being dysfunctional. Amen? Which a lot of times, if we bring our ideology, our mindset from the world, from when we were in our families into the church, the church is going to be dis it's gonna become dysfunctional. Because some of us in our family didn't like our mom. Mm, okay, we church. Some of us in our family didn't know our dad. And then some of us did and didn't like him. Amen? Some of us in the family constantly fought with our siblings. So you come into the church and you think, because you fought with your siblings about every little thing, and you thought, well, let me get to the church. I can fight about with you on every little thing. Amen? When in, uh, you, you, know, you disrespected your mom, so we get to the church and you think you can disrespect the mothers of people who are older than you. We have dysfunction. Amen? But thank God that God knows about training. Amen? Amen. And, 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 and God gave this to me, and I thought it was so funny because in this shifting, I want to tell y'all something, I want y'all to get this, in this shifting that God is doing in my spirit, it's amazing that we can begin to, what we could be seeing in the church is that dysfunction, the dysfunction in the church has 
grown um, I mean, in a huge manner, which has shown that if you look at our families, our families have, have become dysfunctional in a huge manner, in a great manner. Would you all agree or disagree? Yeah, yeah. The family, matter of fact, if you look at television, I was talking to my wife, and we were talking about, um, they were, I love Lucy, and there were certain shows that were, we were watching, they were old shows, and they, they brought them to color, I mean, they were bringing them on, and I said, you know, those were family shows. Uh, they were family shows. You know, I love Lucy and certain things. They were they was crazy too, but they were more family oriented. There was no profanity, no nudity. There was no things in it. But I thought it was interesting. I went on my phone and I was looking for something, and this uh, this kept popping up on my phone, and it said Modern Family. And and there's a you know today they have shows called Modern Family. And what's interesting about the shows called The Modern Family, they have reshaped the family. Amen. Amen? They have reshaped the family. And people love this show. They say, well, they, you know, the families are a sign of the time. And we believe that we should be able to define, redefine family. We redefine family as, you know, anything that we feel, anybody, that any two that want to love each other. If a man and man want to love each other, we will redefine family. If a woman and a woman want to love each other, we will redefine family. We will redefine family in a manner of, you know, we can live together, we don't have to be married, we can have children, we can do all these things. We're going to redefine family. And modern, and this, and us trying to redefine family has caused this, it's a dysfunction in it. it you know, if we, in the way the world is trying to redefine family, that Family would actually cease to exist if we would adopt the mentality and the way the world wants to redefine family because uh, a woman and a woman can't produce any children any longer. What they have to do is they have to borrow from somebody who produced it in the right, in the way it could be done. Amen? So, but God, but I, I see God as saying, and then you know, in the church, we begin to they redefine family too. We we allow some of the world ideology mentality to creep into the church and redefine. We will promote somebody in church because we like them. You know what I'm saying? You know that favorite daughter or son syndrome. You know what I'm saying? Or somebody who really work hard and we think because they work hard that we don't know their intention, so we move them. So we have all this dysfunction in the family, which has brought dysfunction in the church. And God is calling it to order. Amen. God is calling it to order. We have, you know, we 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 think we we don't trip. We don't got so crazy. We think that um there is the black family, and, and then there is the white family, and and then what I love that God. It, it, but see, God, if you're in humanity and you're a woman and a man, somebody doesn't. You don't have to marry somebody because they're a black, and you don't have to marry somebody because you're white. You marry someone who God established you with. Human. You want to marry someone that's human and opposite of the opposite sex. Amen? You want them to be human. We, I have to say that today. Amen? You want them to be of the human species. Humanity. I, I want to make that clear today. You want, if we know you think I'm y'all out, but I'm serious. We're coming to things are so crazy that you're going to have to say, yes, I think you, should, you want to make sure they're of the human and humanity, amen? Humanity is black, white, red, yellow, every man, it's, it's humanity, amen? It doesn't have to be race, it's humanity, amen? As long as he's a man and you are a woman, and I would hope that God is in the midst, amen? I would I pray that God is the centerpiece that brings it together, amen? God don't care if you're black, if you're white, God don't care if you're red or yellow, he made it all. Amen. He made it all. What God does carry is that God is in the midst of it, amen, in the midst of the family. Y'all yeah. with me, right? See, I'm, I'm getting this because I'm, 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 stay with me and be patient with me as the Holy Spirit has his way because I see God is shifting, God is moving in this church. He's getting ready to, God is doing a movement because when we, in this redefinement of family, we, 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 we change the church and we also forget what it's all about. How do you know when you redefine something, you begin to forget the purpose of it? Come on now, if you begin to redefine something, you're going to eventually forget the purpose of it. You know what I'm saying? Men are forgetting the purpose of men. And women are forgetting the purpose of women. And children are forgetting the purpose of children. Because we, what, what, what we did is redefine something. But God says, train. And I want y'all to remember that word, train. Amen? We begin to, and, and oh man, it's interesting when you begin to redefine things. Because now you got children telling their parents what to do. Say, redefine. Amen. You have 
uh, husbands abusing their wives they redefine. You have wives dishonoring and disrespecting their husbands they redefine. Amen. But I, I, let's go. Let's go to the place where um, where Jesus shifted it. Let's go to Mark's the third chapter. We're going to read at the 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 thirtieth first verse. You know, it could be hard trying to minister to people who don't even know who they are. Amen? We're trying to tell you that you're going to move. We're trying to get you to move with power, but you don't even know who you are to move with power. Say amen. Mark chapter 3, verse 31. Read it from the English Standard Version. And his mother and brothers came. Mm -hmm. And standing outside, they sent to him and called him. Now watch this. This is Jesus' mother and brother. They're looking for who? Jesus. They're looking for Jesus. His mother and brother are looking for him. Say, family looking for him. His family looking for him. But Jesus is about to do a shift. Amen. His family is looking for him. But see, and the reason why Jesus has to do the shift because... You couldn't be brought, if, if, if it stayed the same, then you wouldn't be able to be drafted in. Amen? So he has to shift it. Go ahead. Verse 32. And the crowd was sitting around him. Mm -hmm. The crowd was sitting around him. And they said to him, your mother and your brothers are outside. And they tell him that your family is seeking him. His family is seeking him. Go ahead. And he answered them. Mm -hmm. Who are my mother and my brothers? He said, let me help you out. Who is my mother and my brothers? Now Jesus, they're telling Jesus his family outside, but Jesus asks, who is my mother and my brothers? Because see, they're looking at him from a fleshly perspective. They're looking at him from a, but see, Jesus understands his mission. He understands his assignment. And he understands that he can't get you, he has to disconnect you trying to know him from a fleshly perspective. He has to broaden what he came to do. Can I get in? Amen. So go ahead. Verse 34. And looking about at those who sat around him. So he's looking at those who sat around the world. Some of y'all gonna get there. He's looking at those who are sitting around the world. It's interesting that Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So he has people sitting around the world, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, they're sitting around the world and they're asking him, they're saying that his natural family is looking for him. But Jesus begins to look up, it's funny that the family was looking for the world. But they were looking for the word in the flesh. Jesus said, I'm going to have to transcend. I'm going to have to make this greater than this. Go ahead. Looking at those who were sat sitting around him, he said, mm -hmm. what did he say? Here are my mother and my brothers. Uh oh. He's looking, his mother and brother were looking for him. But he looks around to those who were sitting around him. He says, Everybody say, here. Yeah. Hmm. I, I want you to get it because I'm, I'm not, I'm preaching under the Holy Spirit and I want you to understand what God is saying tonight. I want somebody to say, point your finger and say, here. Yeah. See, because I'm not going to preach not myself. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to preach myself. I'm only going not by myself. As, I'm going to preach myself as a servant, but I'm going to preach Christ Jesus. And Christ is the living word of God. So he says that those who were sitting around the word, the sea, those who were sitting around the sea, he says, I'm, he said, but those who are here. <coughs> those who are in the midst of the word, because what happened is that if we don't understand why we come to church, if we forget why we come to church and we start 
uh, thinking about all, oh, you know, I came to church to get a husband. I came to church to get this. I, I came to church. But Jesus said, let me help you out. Those who are here. And I thought it was interesting about this. He had his disciples sitting there too. Disciples, those who are being trained. He, he's looking at those who are being trained because they are in the midst of the word of God. Say, in the midst of the word of God. Y'all got to get this. They are in the midst of the word of God, but they're talking about family. They are in the midst of the word of God, but they are talking about family. And they say unto him, your family is looking for you. But Jesus looks around to those who are sitting in the midst of the word and said, my family what? Here are my mother and my brothers. He said, my family is here. Hmm. He said, my family is here. Giving us an idea of what he's come for. Giving us an idea of what he, his desire, what the father's desire is, and what he came to build. He said, my mother and my brother are what? <coughs> Here. <coughs> so I, I would believe that according to scripture, if, I, if I'm going to preach Christ Jesus and you are here. Then he's talking to his family. Amen. Yes. If he, he, he's not talking to strangers, he's talking, he said, those who are here. Amen. Those who are in the midst of being in a position to receive a seed. He said, because if you were if you're here and you're sitting in my midst, I believe seeds. And I, I want to, I don't want to, I don't want a casual meeting. I, I want to, you to be here with me so I can be able to release something in you that now you can be a part of me. I, I want to release something to you that you can receive and now what you're receiving going to make you a part of me. Because he said to his disciples, he said, God, disciples, when you pray, disciple means one who is disciplined in the word of God. One who is being trained in the ways of God. Y'all with me? He said to his disciples, how would the world know that you are my disciples in the way that you See, family has to love one another. Amen. You say, here, keep reading. Oh, keep reading. Verse 35. Mm -hmm. For whoever does the will of God. Oh, here we go. Say it again. Whoever does the will of God. I want you to underline that word, does. I want you to underline the word does because. He said, he said, my mother and my brother are here, but you're going to be able to tell them because they do the will of their father. See, there, there might be some here that you, you, you hear, but you have another family. father, but you don't act like 
But he said to them, go, say it again. For whoever does the will of God, mm -hmm. he is my brother, my sister, and my mother. So he connected his family to those who do the will of God. Amen. He connected, what is God doing today? Just because you go to one body in Christ don't mean you God's family. Amen. Just because you go to the divine hope don't make you God's family. Just because you go to First Baptist don't make you God's family. He said, those who, my mother and my brother and my sisters, you will know my family because they are doers of God's will. Amen. See, some people, you might be doers of the church tradition. Of God's will. Amen. Mm, this is good. That, that's why a man of God, a woman of God, they cannot preach themselves. They have to preach Christ because Christ came to reveal the Father's will. He said, My mother, he said, My, my mother, my brother, and my sisters are those who do what? The will of God. He said, that's my family. My family gonna be on one accord. My family gonna be on one mindset. But let's break this thing down tonight. Y'all need to break this thing down tonight? Y'all looking like, yeah. say hallelujah, somebody. Y'all looking like that. Uh, it's gonna be good. Uh, okay, but. How do we get there? Let's go to Matthew 8, 18. We're going to get empowered by the word of God tonight. Amen? Read 18 verse 3, 4. Matthew chapter 18 verse 3 and said truly I say to you unless you turn and become like children say it again unless you turn and become like children see the problem is he said my mother and my brother and my sisters unless they do the will of the father but see even to learn the will of the father you gotta come like a child I want to tell you what God has been telling me. We have too many grown people coming, trying to come and enter the kingdom. We have too many people coming, trying to enter in the family like you grown. Act like you grown in the family. Trying to enter the family like you grown. Mm. But the word says unless you come like a Child. See, yo, we got to get this tonight. You may wonder, why, why am I not growing? Why do I find myself being stagnant? Why do I find myself trusting with God? Why can I walk with power? Because you're too busy trying to tell God what to do. Instead of like a child receiving him telling you what to do. See, if God is creating him, he didn't say, y'all got to get this, y'all got to get this. He could have said his will. He said, God's will. Oh, somebody gonna get it. Why didn't he say, well, not my will, do what I'm saying. No, he said, do what God's will. Why? Because he said, he said, my family are those who comply with the Father, who desire to obey the Father. But what God has been dealing with me about it, he's birthed this. I know the problem is, we, 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 we get in church, and, and while we in church, we, we, we come in learning about what we need God to do for us. We come in like we are grown, trying to tell God. You know when you're grown, you want to tell the Father what to do. You want to tell the Father what you need. You want to tell the Father what he should be adding to you. But I, but I read, he says, if you're going to come, you got to come like a child. Some of us, we, we're not approaching the Father. I heard the women of God when they were doing praise, what is he on the posture? 
yourself. Like, know who you are. But when you are a child, posture yourself in a manner of understanding who you are coming before. And I don't know, see, some of us know, I know, I know, I know, I know, you don't have no home training. You ain't ever had no home training, but that's okay. That's not, I'm not trying to throw shade at you. I'm just letting you know we're going to be trained. Somebody wasn't loving you. But it's good tonight. But he said, I need you to come to me as a child. <clears throat> Keep reading. Read, read a little bit. For unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. He said, unless you turn like, unless you humble yourself child, you can't get to the father's domain. You cannot be one of the father's children unless you humble yourself like a child. I want to tell you something. This is what's going on in religion, no. We are bringing people in and we are impressed by their credentials, their gifts and their talents. So they come in, not coming as a child, but they come in as though they believe they have something to offer God. And when you believe you have something to offer someone, there's no humility. You believe there's a, an entitlement, you believe that what you're doing for them is equivalent to what they have, what they have for you, so therefore, you're, you say that you are in the church, but you're not in the kingdom, you're in the church and people You are. You walk in the arrogance of who you think you are. And because we have men and women of God who will embrace who you are to build their vision instead of God's kingdom, they will embrace who you are. Never having an expectation of you transforming. Y'all better hear what I'm saying. See, today all you have to do is give somebody a million dollars and they will embrace who you are even though your life does not look it's ripped up doesn't look like you've been like you've been trained but now because you give somebody a million dollars or you do you can all you in the music you can sing you can sing beautiful let me bring you in and let me let me let you help Are what's successful in the kingdom. We have told our children you're somebody when you get an education, which is good. We have told them everything that makes them somebody so they have strived and they have tried to try to obtain these things to feel like somebody. But yet they are still empty and have no weapons to fight with. So when trouble comes, they fall to the wayside because we brought them up the wrong way. We train them like they were. We say, you know what? If you get a degree, you're special to me. If you make money, you are special to me. If you get married to the white boy, you are special to me. So we 
train them to find their identity in the things they accomplish. So if anybody begins to threat what they have accomplished, they threat their identity so they get hostile. But Jesus, God says, I gotta train you. He said, He says, come like a child. He said, humble yourself like a child. He says, watch this, watch this. Because when you come like a child, when you come like an infant, when you come like a baby, go to first Peter. The second chapter. I'm feeling the Holy, the Holy Spirit. I thank God for His presence in here tonight. Anybody can feel the presence. I thank God. Come on, I thank God for His presence in here tonight. Because you wonder, why can't I get delivered? Why can't I get set free? Have you humbled yourself like a child? Or are you still dictating to God what to do? Amen? Read, watch this. Why do we have to come and say, whosoever therefore shall humble himself as a little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom. We say, I want you to be great. I don't want you just to be a child of my kingdom. I want you to be great. But to be great as a child of my kingdom, you have to do what? Say, humble yourself. Okay. First Peter, second chapter, second verse, what it says. First Peter chapter two, verse three. Mm -hmm. Again, reading from the English Standard Version. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Two, two, two. Verse two. Verse two. Like newborn infants. Say like newborn infants. Like newborn Say not. He said, I want you just to come like a child. He said, I want you to come like a newborn infant. Because a newborn infant can't do nothing for us. Yes. Yes. I want you to come knowing that your father has to retrain you. I want you to come like a, because the truth be told is, when you come like a newborn infant, I can train you. Don't even feel saved unless they feel like they're doing something in the kingdom. They don't even feel like they belong unless they are doing something in the kingdom. I'm going to tell you, God is giving the birth of family. God is birthing a family. He's birthing a family. And in a family, guess what? I don't want, I want y'all to think about this. You didn't do anything to get into that family. Somebody say grace. grace. See, this is good. You have nothing to do with your birth. Absolutely nothing. It was up to your mom and your dad and your mom to even decide if you were going to be here. You didn't even have the power to know if you were going to be here or not. They pushed you for it. It was their seed. That's why Jesus said, he was sitting before him, he said, it's my seed. You won't have nothing to do with this. You can't do nothing about this. I'm gonna bring you forward. I'm releasing the seed of life. He said, but like a newborn, they go ahead. Like newborn infants mm -hmm. long for pure spiritual milk. Say, I want you to long for spiritual milk. Somebody got to get it. Like newborn infants desiring the pure milk of the word of God. I want you to have a desire for the word. Yes, yes. He said, I, I don't want you. When you come in, I'm not concerned with your gifts. I'm not concerned with your talents. I need to. I know you get in the world. I know you get in the world. I need to bring to you. You gotta come like a child. I don't care if it's 25. I don't care if it's 35. I don't care if it's 45. I don't care what you think you have accomplished in the world. I don't care if you have a Grammy, a PhD, a doctor degree. When you come to me, you come as a child. You humble yourself. Because what I'm about to give you, you can get from the wall. Yeah. Yeah. If 
as if your singing ability was going to fill you up. In the church, the dysfunction, remember I said dysfunctional family, dysfunctional church. It became dysfunctional. We thought, in the family, let me tell you what I mean. We said, okay, we're going to give our children everything we didn't have. So we thought, if we gave them the Air Jordans, we thought if we bought them the cars and, and we gave them all the stuff, that that was going to cause them to be a strong and outstanding person. But then we start finding out that, that we gave them all this stuff for tennis shoes and we and parents are angry because they're more rebellious, more disrespectful. And then we have the audacity to turn around and tell our kids, huh, I did all this for you, why are you acting like this? Because what you did couldn't fill me. Don't get me wrong, what you did made me happy for a moment. But it couldn't take away the attitude. What you did made me joyful, happy for a little while, but it couldn't take away the brokenness. What you did had me smile for a while, but I still feel empty. He said, but if you come like babies, he said, come like an infant, but no one can enter the kingdom. You gotta come like a child. Humble yourself, come like you are thirsty for the world. Now I gotta, I gotta show you what happened. When he said, he, the Bible says he was sitting among the crowd. And his family was on the outside asking for him. The crowd is sitting in the midst of the some of y'all's with me. The crowd was sitting in the midst of the word. And the word says, for those who do the will of God, that's my mother. That's my brother. That's my sister. But how can I do the will of my father if I come to my father like I'm grown, telling him what to do. We sound like the prodigal son who tried to go to his father and say, give me your, give me my inheritance now. In other words, rewrite your will to what I want. Some of us, somebody gonna get here. I know, thank you, I got, I got one person there. I got one person that's tapping in. No person tapping in. Rewrite your will according to fit in what I want. Rewrite it according to the things that's going to make me feel important. Not going to bring the Father glory. So we got this new thing, not to bring the Father glory, but to bring you glory. So Father, I need you, because the prophet son said, I need you to rewrite your will, because I want to go sow my oaks. I want to go out there and Establish my name. I want to go out there. And, do we sound like that? I want to go out there and blow up. I want everybody to know me. I want to go out there and do me. So rewrite your will. And it's like we're trying to get God to rewrite the word so everybody can see us. What we want. How we want it. But see, that, that, that's not going to go from where we're going now. Watch this. As like newborn baby infants, desire and appear in the word that you may grow into, and grow into salvation. I like the way they would grow into salvation. See, some of us are, why am I not growing? Why am I not growing strong? Because you're still telling God what to do. You haven't humbled yourself like a child. We're going to find out, you know, see, you haven't submitted to God. See, no, we, let me tell you, oh, what is going to be good? We think that we, see, people saying they submitted to God, and then you see them getting their behind toe up, and we wonder, well, why are they acting this way? Why do they act outside of their training? Somebody can do what I just said. Why do they act outside of their training through the time of adversity? If they came like a child, 
And he's saying, I want you to desire milk like a child. The, the word, what is the word doing in you? The word has to be doing something in you. It has to be trained. Oh, let me, let me get, let me get up here. Let me go, let me get, so you can understand where I'm going. So you can, so we can get there. Say amen. amen. So we say, we come in like babies. Look at somebody say, humble yourself like a child. Does anyone, can I ask a question? Does anyone see that in the dysfunction of families today that there is great rebellion? Yes. Yes. Okay. Anybody else see that? Yes. And this is not a thing just for children. As parents, we hold some accountability for that. Your child throw a fit. Here, I'm going to give you some candy. If you stop acting like that. Your child be tripping. There is no chasing of the children. And then, it's like you go from one extreme to the next. Then it's not chasing, it's just straight out abuse. Verbally, physically, emotionally, get your blank, blank, blank in this house. See, Satan knew, it's like Satan knew something that the church ain't get the revelation yet. What did Satan do? He had to know he was once in the family. He knew that God was family oriented. He knew them. So he knew if he can mess up, why do you think he went to the woman? And the woman, and he, he, he went to the woman when the man was supposed to be accountable. How many know that Adam was accountable for the woman? That was his wife. And he went to the woman, and the enemy began to talk to the woman, and she bit the fruit, and then she passed disobedience to her children, to her, to her husband, who was already disobedient because the fact is he should have been covering his wife. See, what, he, what did he do? Come on, we don't make something look crazy and feel old just to make it look so great, but it's really kind of simple. All that Satan did was make the family look dysfunctional. Because then after they, the woman caused the man to stumble, and when the man stumbled, he, they have children, and then they have Cain and Abel, and then Cain is jealous of his brother Abel, and, and they're going for the father, and the father said, Cain, and don't die, Lord, thou good, good, thou shall receive it. to really edify the kids in the first place. Because we edify in what we call good, but God said what you're calling good to edify and not call evil. Now, let, let, me, let me help us out. You think it's good because your 15 year old daughter want to go to a prom. You haven't met the guy. You don't talk to your have nothing. So you're going to bring your 15 year old daughter to be independent, to operate independent from you, and then sign off on her going to a prom with somebody that this dude, you don't even know he's 18. And when he come pull up and pick her up, you take the pictures and you say, this is good. But when she ends up pregnant or cursing you out, you don't understand the rebellion because you did what she wanted to do. Oh, y'all gonna give another example. Your father tell you something. Your spiritual father tell you something. But somebody tell you, well, no, you don't have to comply with that. You wrong. And you listen to what they say. You say, well, that's good. They told me they ate me, but what you thought, what you perceived as good is wicked inside of God. See, the problem is we say this: God is good. And all the time. But see, I'm glad that God gave us another way of saying God is good. All the, time. the devil's a liar. All the time. Let us know the difference. All the time. 
See, the problem with the church, we don't know the difference between what's good and not good. We call things good that are not good. We call things that we, we call things that are all good, we call them wicked. I can't believe that mother was so stern with her daughter. I can't, she won't let her daughter do anything. She won't even, and guess what? Since she won't let her daughter go out there and date these guys, when her daughter go to college, she gonna get loose. You take your wicked and evil prophetic lying tongue. Uh, somebody say, uh. uh. Somebody say, uh. uh. <laughs> See, the child, if the child is not drinking the milk, the milk, you watch this, the milk affects the inside. The milk affects the inside, but you can see it on the outside. Calcium, the milk, strengthen the bones, the inner structure. He said, God said, I'm tired of people trying to dress like they strong on the outside, but collapsing on the inside. They looking like they sold out for God. They looking like they love God. I've seen people in church, they be singing it. They be running hard and hard. And soon a storm comes. They don't collapse. What? Proverbs 26 6. Father with all our credentials. We come in the Father with all our intellect and all our wisdom. And God, like, I can't even talk to you. Amen. 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 Look at somebody say, not no more. No say, I'm coming like a child. Like a, child. Like a baby. Like a baby. Ready, to Ready to drink the word. So I can grow up. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this, but anybody tell you, know, I've seen people, I'm saying, nah, I've seen it. <laughs> See, we, children like to respond emotionally. Oh, yeah. 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 Children are very emotional. They're supposed to, come on, amen? Yeah. They emotional response. They emotional. When a child get what they want, they be like, ah! When they don't get what they want, So if you were to look at a child's response, you could be deceived. <laughs> See, some of us getting that, some of us are doing, you get this word, it's like a mirror. Don't feel bad, I'm there, some, 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 you're like, oh, I did act like a little child. Because like, God ain't brought you no husband yet. <laughs> so you go out there and get Jojo. Because you don't get what you want, you get mad and you walk out. You don't get what you want, so you stop asking and praying. 
that's not how children act. When I was a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, when I, let me put this way, when I became a new man, because Ephesians is one new man, I put away childish things. We drink in the milk. We drink in the word. Why? Start reading. What does it say? Proverbs chapter 22. Yeah, what does it say? Verse 6. Mm -hmm. Train up a child. Everybody scream. up a child. See, if you had a bunch of people, uh, imagine God is with us. <laughs> if we had a lot of people come to the church and they would drop their credentials at the door, they would drop their color and their, they would drop their, 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 their everything they thought that made them something at the door. And they came in as children. You know what children do when they go to preschool? Let me give an example.
thank her for snitching. She can't even do thank her. That's what, see, they will tell you this in the world. That's called judgment. She judged me. No, she didn't. She saved you. She loved you enough to not allow you to sleep on the word of God. your mind is stupid. This is foolish. That's why you can't be moved in the kingdom. If you notice about children when you speak to them, they be like, they be excited about it because they trust what you're talking about. Let me go up here so I can see. Like I said, you got the hands down. Look at somebody. My arms touch. Somebody hold, help her hold her hand, huh? arms up. Hold yours up like you have to hold us up. My arms tie. You ain't held your arms up for 30 seconds. church stuff. We just ain't got too strong in life. He says, train up a child what? In the way it should go. Say, train me in the way I should go. See, when you come into the kingdom, God has to train you in the way you should go. He has to train you. Why? Because that's what he was saying. I can picture Jesus saying when he got the crowd. My mother and my, my brother and my sisters are right here. And I'm about to train them. They're going to be some, ooh, they going to be off the chain when I finish training them. When I finish training them. Because watch this, you got to get this, you got to get this. Because the Bible says that he was born to destroy the works. Somebody going to get it, y'all. Pastor, the Bible says that the one is training you he was manifested for this purpose to destroy. You ain't get it. You gonna get it. Somebody gonna get it. The one that is training you, the one that you should be following, the Bible says he was manifested to destroy the thing that has had you in bondage.
the works of the enemy. But you know why you know why we some of us get defeated? Because nobody can train you. Because you think you know everything. You got some people, they've been in church. <laughs> they, they, they prophesied one time and they, they did something and you that's just too silly for me. That's not. That's just, that's, God wouldn't tell me to do that. So, so you think you know God. The same God that spit in his hands and he put blood on somebody's eyes. I'm going to tell you a dangerous thing. When you intellectually think that you have arrived to the point that you can't even see faith no more. Amen. You can't even understand faith no more. You start intellectualizing what you think God will do and what he won't do based on how it makes you look. You get what I just said? Based on how, not how God look. Because God don't mind looking crazy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. God don't mind looking crazy that a soul gets saved. Understand scripture. When Jesus hung up on that cross, he was hanging on the cross like a criminal. That means many that walked by looked at him, they didn't know him as the Son of God. They looked at look at that criminal up there. He a criminal. But he didn't mind becoming a criminal. He didn't mind dying like a criminal. Well, we mind the way somebody talked to us. So we won't hold our peace for them to see the glory of God. We don't even like nobody rolling their eyes at us. Uh, say we gonna say we growing. growing. Train up a child in the way it should go. And what? Train up a child in the way he should go. And even when he is old, even he when will he's not old, depart from him. Somebody say. When you get trained, you're not wishy-washy. When you get trained, you're not lukewarm. Listen to the word. He said, train a child in the wish, and when they get old, he will not depart. So God, the scripture saying, when we come like a child and we get trained, that what we're getting trained in has the ability to sustain you. Mm. See, some of us don't like the training. But God, man, this God birthed this world in this training. Uh, Patrick, come here for a minute. Come here for a minute. Here. Coach. I want you to look around, just grab anybody you want to look around, as long as they not pray. Hey. Bring them to the middle. You the trainer, tell them what you need them to do. Thank you. 
How many of you know you can't get the best results unless you listen to the training? a day and they get a thing what they call muscle um muscle memory god says i want to train you that you can be able to respond in him when somebody tries you you know what god was telling me i'm gonna tell you I, i'm not trying to think about it but i'm gonna tell you god said you know what see god shifted the hour and he gave us some company he said what's funny about it is when we come in the evening time i said god what's going on so we come in the evening time see the bottom line is, if you get here in the evening and you've been real busy through the, in the morning and you went to this service and you're doing this and you're doing that and doing that, when was your time to meditate for what you was getting ready to do what you were supposed to do? Amen. So you come in here trying to get praise out, but you ain't even praise God. Amen. Your praise dead, so you can't get nobody else to praise. Amen. Why? Because you ain't been in the presence. Amen. You trying to figure out what song to play because you ain't been in the presence. here at five. You should be praising, being in his presence. Why? You got to train somebody. Amen. We don't got quiet. <laughs> Say, we don't got quiet. Got quiet. Say, don't do, don't do it. Train up a child in the way it should go. That when it is old enough, let's go to First Timothy, the fourth chapter. We about to bring it home. Amen. Say, train me. How many of you know you want the word of God? You want to be trained. Yes. Is there anybody tired of the enemy trying to tear up your family? Yes. Is there anybody tired of your health being towed up? Yes. Oh, don't lie. That's what I'm... Do you know there are things that will repeatedly come in your there are, there are things that will repeatedly come into your life until you begin to exercise your training? Yes. Speak deliverance to somebody else, but you won't exercise your training. Yeah. Training don't start when you're in the incident. 
Training is before you get before the incident gets to that place. You got to be ready before the thing even comes. You want to be declaring the cream before you. Why you watch this? Why you feeling good? You might say, how you doing? I'm so blessed. I'm, I can't stand myself. I'm healthy. I'm highly favored. What are you doing? I'm training. What I'm saying? What does the word say? I wish that you prosper in health as your soul prosper. Why are you always saying it when I'm prospering in health as my soul? I'm training. See, Jesus, this is so good. Jesus is a train. Jesus, Jesus y'all gotta get this. Jesus trained 30 years before he went into ministry. So when Satan confronted him, that was a, he responded with his training. And then want to go into ministry. And wonder why you always get your butt kicked. And people can't see God because your training doesn't reflect it. Reflect. A... But say that's okay. Because I'm gonna receive this word tonight. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Start at the eighth verse. 1 Timothy, 4th chapter, 8 verse. 1 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 8. For while bodily training is of some value. He says, though bodily training is of some value. And I want y'all to understand this. In the natural, training is good. It is of some value. We're not about to get crazy. I don't want nobody operating on me going to have some training. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you. I don't want nobody to sit my car because he doesn't have some. Amen. If I'm going to go to somebody financially who's going to help me achieve financial independence, I hope they have some. Amen. But that training is good. But see, that type of training, oh, I know my mission, doesn't change you. It changes what you can do, but it doesn't change you. Let me give an example. I can train in law enforcement. I went through the academy, I trained, I went to the marching, I had to go through the gun range, I had to, uh, I had to learn law. But all that I had to train, I had, there were times in my office that I had to reflect to my Y'all better hear what I'm saying. And if you don't, you're going to be in trouble because they're going to what? When you do something wrong, they will go to your training and say, why didn't you know that? But how many of y'all know this? Training is tried at the highest level of pressure. I'll never forget when I was in the gun range, sitting there from 5 feet, 7 feet, 15 to 20. It wasn't as hard. But when I went and they cut off all the lights, and you had to go and they were flipping things, there were some things shot that should never have been shot. Because I was like, bah, bah, bah. at the end, you don't kill the woman and her child. Look at pressure can cause you to hurt somebody when you have not trained correctly. Amen. But the more I trained, the easier it began. I, watch this, y'all better get this. The more I trained, my response, my More on point. Amen. The Bible says sin is to miss the what? Amen. So that means when we, to miss the what? I want you to imagine a target. The Bible says to sin is to miss the target. So God says, let me train you so you won't miss. 
target. How do you know the closer you get to sin of mass, the harder? The two areas where you get the highest points are the heart and the head. You bruise my heel, I'm going to push your head and change your heart. You bruise my heel, I'm going to push your head. God says, I want you to sit down at the world. I want to train you in the world. That when the enemy comes towards you, you are taking your head off. You will respond when the word is in you. God says, God, God wants to make you a sharpshooter. And some of us got to be like, God, God, 
I brought you to be a warrior. Whatever field you in. Uh -uh. I sent you. I called you. Come on, watch what he said to you. I called you more than conquerors. Not conquerors. More than conquerors. Listen, let's finish reading. Go ahead, I'm going to show you. First Timothy chapter 4, verse uh -huh. 8. For while bodily training is of some value, right. godliness is of value in every way. Come on. He says, I want to train you in godliness. He said, bodily training is of value. But I want to train you. I'm going to show you in the scripture what the church was supposed to do. I want to train you. He said, I call you my sons, my mother, because I'm going to train you in godliness. I'm going to train you. Why? Because as I train you in godliness, <laughs> you're going to think like me. Yes, yes. You're going to speak and act like me. And you're going to walk with power and authority Hallelujah. up on the earth. Yes. And he says, I'm and the God, when people look at you, they're going to say, you know, when a child acts like their parents, they're like, come oh, like, like your mama. Yes, yes. I can see, and when your mama's in right stand, they say, you know what, she did a good job with you. Yes. She raised you and she did a good But when you're acting crazy, girl, you acting like your mama. I see this is generational. <laughs> your mama crazy, you crazy. I'm going to pray that thing be broken before you have a baby and they be crazy. Uh, this got to be broken. Amen. That's why the Bible says you're a new generation. Yes. Come on, some things have to be broken, am I right? Yes. Some things have to be broken. Yes. Don't get me wrong, I love my dad, but some things have to be broken. Yes. I love my mom, but some things have to be broken. Yes. Amen? I'm not going to be fighting their demons. I'm going to conquer their demons. Yes. My dad is an alcoholic. I'm like, uh, that ain't broken. I became a new creature. All old things have passed away. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I'm not using that as an excuse. My dad was, my dad was a, wherever he laid his hat was his home. You know what I'm saying? He was home. Uh-uh. That's going to be broken in my family. Uh-uh. My mom, my mom was disrespectful and rude. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. That thing going to be broken. Uh-uh. I'm a new generation. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. 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 Say, uh-uh. Mm -mm. Say, uh, not, say, uh, uh. Oh. Say, I'm coming like a child. I'm, like a child. I'm getting my mind renewed. I'm my mind renewed. Yes. Yes. Keep on reading. Godliness is a value in every way as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. Look at this, Elder. He said, what I'm training you in is going to help you. If I say, now. See, no, you ain't got to wait for this. Why? What you're being trained is going to help you. Now, now faith yeah. is the substance of things hoped for and everything's things not seen. Yes. Now, what I'm training you in, why are you coming to, you're not coming to the world to be entertained. See, I don't need you hopping up and down. I need you to sit down. I need to, let us hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. I need you to digest this. I need you, this was that, I need you to eat. So you can get a word now. So you can understand who you are now. Now you have power. Ooh, somebody should have screamed on me. Now you have love. Put your hand on your head and say, now I have a sound mind. Every thought that enemy can let your mind trying to torment you, trying to tell you what you're not going to be, shooting thoughts of perversion and pouring all those thoughts at your mind. Lay hands on your mind and say, I take back my mind in the name of Jesus. Good, keep going. 
verse 9. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. The same is trustworthy and a full acceptance. Go ahead. For to this end we toil and strive, because we have our hope set on the living God. Where's our hope at? Who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. Say, we believe. We believe. Say, he's my, he my Savior. Come on, point your hand and say, he's my Savior. He's my Savior. Who saved you? Jesus. Who saved you? Jesus. You mean the one who was manifested to destroy the works of the enemy? Yes. You mean the one who destroyed the works of Satan? That's your savior. Yes. That's the one who trained you. Because yes. see, if I train you, see I can train you on how to be black, but being black ain't got no power. Amen. I can train you on many things, but it ain't going to have no power to fight the spiritual realm. Amen. So that's why I can't preach for Christ Jesus, because when I preach, I got to train you in Christ. Why? So you can walk with power, love, and a sound mind. Yes. That you may meditate on the word. Let me tell you something. I have thoughts coming from my, come on, the enemy's shooting thoughts I'm talking about on. He'll shoot thoughts of porn. He'll shoot thoughts of anger. He'll shoot thoughts of bitterness. He'll shoot thoughts. He's shooting thoughts. Wait a minute. You don't think he's shooting thoughts? Then why the word say, the shield of faith? Why does the word say, why does the word say, capture every thought if you want to go be none shot? If there was not going to be a warfare, then why does the word make it sound like there's coming, something coming at you and giving you the weapons to deal with it? See, some of us, you beating yourself up over thoughts, but you fail to realize the thoughts don't have power to make you move. Oh, somebody should have screamed in the head. You beating yourself over the enemy throwing a thought, but yet when he threw the thought, when you was in the world when he threw that thought, you would be flipping and doing all kinds. But now he throw a thought. You like, you push it to the side, you keep on pushing. That showed me that you, you defeated him. Oh man, I had this thought. I'm so wicked. No, capture it and cast it down. Go ahead. I'm going to stop at verse 16. Verse 11. Command and teach these things. See, I'm on what? what I'm commanded to teach these things, right? See, this one, this one we should be teaching. He said, command and teach these things right here. Teach them that godliness. When they come here, teach them about godliness. Train them to walk like little Jesus. Let them begin to walk like little Jesus so they can have walk with dominion and power and authority. Let them know that the same power that working in me can desire to work inside of you. You don't have to call me at your house, cast it out and go to sleep yourself. Rebuke every unclean spirit. Every spirit is unlike God that's trying to torment your mind. Every spirit of oppression, depression. In the name of Jesus, I, I command that spirit to loose your mind. In Jesus' name. Go ahead. Verse 12. Let no one despise you of your youth. Stop saying you're young. Watch this. One month old baby, six month old baby, they drink their milk, they both get the same thing to need to grow. I should be able to see the manifestation on both of them. Y'all better give what I just see. That six month old, that, that one month old baby is going to show some evidence that it's drinking milk. Can I get an amen? amen? Just like that six month old baby is going to show some evidence that it's been drinking milk. Do not let, let don't let the six month old baby despise the one month old baby because they both need milk. Because they both need milk. Because they both need milk. God called you 
to have victory over the enemy. You can't move with hate and beat the enemy. It's impossible. Why? That's like fighting gasoline, a fire with gasoline. All you're doing is causing it to grow. That's what the United States is like. It's just hatred on hatred. I hate you. You hate me. I hate you. When the truth really is, you broken and I'm broken. And I need to be trained on how to get victory. Amen? Amen. I need to be trained on how to get victory. Keep reading. But set the believers an example in speech. Okay, watch it. He says, now, nah, if I'm training you in godliness, then I can do what? I can set an example to the believers in speech. My conversation should look like I've been trained. If I'm talking to somebody and I'm coming out my mouth with a bunch of, you know, sometimes you're about to curse. Sometimes you're coming out your mouth with just a bunch of anger. And people can tell when you're talking to you and when you ain't and sometimes parents, we have to watch how we talk to our children. When they when they do something wrong, you can't come from a place of anger. You gotta come from a place of a lesson. Let me teach you that's the wrong thing to do. And if you're angry, sometimes you gotta walk away. Let me calm myself down. It's okay to walk away. Then come back and explain that's not a good thing. Because the only reason you tell them it's bad is because you don't want to be hurt by it. Can I get an amen? amen? So we can be an example by the way we speak. Go ahead. In conduct. Ooh. He said your conduct ought to show that you did. See, my conduct shouldn't be like this. Stand up for me. Stand up for me. My conduct shouldn't be like this. Hey. That's not my conscience. My conscience should be, I love him. My conscience should be loving him too. See, that's how my conduct kind of shouldn't be left to be a reproach to somebody. My conduct shouldn't be partial. My conduct shouldn't be partial. Because God wasn't partial. Love wasn't partial towards you. Our conduct, our conduct, he said, now your speech in your conduct. Go ahead. In love. In love. In what? In love. In love. Amen. This is why I won't sex you. Because my conduct in speech is moving in power. Because I want to show you love. I want to show you the love of God. You've been hurt and wounded by people, but I got to show you something different. But watch this. How do y'all know? I didn't know nothing different. I only know what my daddy taught me. You only know. I only know what my boys taught me. So I, when I came to God, I needed to be trained again. I needed to come like a child. To be and I had to come and sit down and see, this is what we got to stop doing in church. So I come in the church, and you know what? Because I can play an instrument, I don't get a chance to sit down. I have to come here, come here, come here, come over here. Let me let you play over here. And now I'm playing an instrument, and I'm playing the music of God still broken. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Because I didn't let you sit down and drink that milk so you can become, become strong and you can become, you can become wise in the ways of God. It don't matter. Some people have to sit down longer than others. And that's why I'm going to tell you something. You know the hardest people to minister to? Are religious people. You know why? Because they're so prideful. You can't tell them nothing. You can't tell them to sit down. Because watch this. The evidence that you are mature is your ability to humble yourself in any situation. You don't have to tell me what you know. I'll see what you know by the way you humble yourself. You can't tell me that you invest in the kingdom and nobody can't tell you to do something. You, what you are investing is rebellion. Because watch this. <laughs> he said those who do the will, if you were doing the will, Jesus came from heaven to earth. 
to show us the way. So if God can humble himself and also yield himself even to the high priest at that moment, what God do you serve that you can't yield yourself? Say, we get trained. See, we being here now, it's training. It's training. We didn't come in here telling Apostle Gene what we're going to do or not. We came in here saying, what do we have us to do? Amen. What you need us to do? If you run past, if they go in, if I, Apostle Gene and run past the 730, we, we have to let the 730. If God wants to have it out there, maybe he wants to ride out with him, whatever they, That's what humility. Humility is the, watch this. Love does not insist on his own way. God, here it is. Love insists on the way God is flowing. Are we on? We getting this tonight? Amen. Go ahead. In faith. In faith. Love and faith. That's it. In impurity. Oh, love, faith, and purity. Love, faith, and purity. That's the training of godliness. When you are trained, you're trained, you're being trained in love. In the word, in period. Because how I many know we weren't pure before? Come on, I wasn't pure. Amen? You, your thoughts have to be, be your, when, you, when you're hearing the word, the word of God is making your thoughts what? Pure. Renewing your mind. Because some people are angry, some people are mad, but they need to sit down and understand that God, wanna, God loves them. God, God forgives them. God is. Amen? Okay. Okay, let's, that's 16. Let's go one more verse. Let's go, let's go to uh, Timothy. Stay in the same book. Go to 6. We're going to bring it home there. Are we grabbing something out of this? Look at something. Come as a child. Be ready for God to teach, train you. No, stay, stay in second, stay in Timothy. Just go to the sixth chapter and start reading at the seventh verse. Say, God is. I'm going to show you what we meant. I'm going to show you in the scripture how we shifted, but God is shifting back. I'm about to show you in the scripture how we shifted. Go ahead. First Timothy chapter six, verse seven. Mm -hmm. For we brought nothing into this world. Okay, go back up. Go up to what you, what you, what you start reading in verse seven. Um, go up. Go up to five. In constant friction among people who are depraved in mind and depraved in the truth, imagining that godliness is a means of gain. Okay, go up to four. Go to three. First Timothy chapter six, verse three. If anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not oh, agree. Just start at the first verse. <laughs> <laughs> start at the first verse. Ah, ah. Great. Sorry. First Timothy chapter. That's all. How you know? It's so good. You just want to get all. Right? I said just say, go ahead. Go ahead. Verse one. Uh -huh. Let all who are under a yoke of bond servants mm -hmm. regard their own masters as worthy of all honor. See, that's see, that's a child. A master is a teacher. Regard them as put honor. Be with it, because when you honor something, you submit to it. Let them teach you. Amen. Teach you. Don't be coming the house, God, ready to eat, ready to drink. Get the word of God that you may grow thereby, that you can become strong. That's what transformation is. Transformation is renewing your mind. Amen? Because how I think is what I do. If I change how I think, I'll change what I do. Amen? Go ahead. So that the name of God and the teachings may not be revived. Watch this. So the name of God and his teaching, I'm going to put it this way, will not look crazy. Humble yourself to your teachers that the name of God, that you won't look crazy saying you want to go. Humble yourself to your training. You know what's interesting about those, sometimes we move, those who are trained, those who teach. I have to, um, one day we, we teach, we get taught, then we teach. 
But see, sometimes when we get taught, when we get teach, we have to also get taught again. Continuous learning and growing in the kingdom. Amen? Because I've been taught ever since I came and said I've been taught, taught, and learning. Be bearing witness. Keep going. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. Those who have believing masters must not be disrespectful on the ground that they are brothers. Mm -hmm. And watch this. And this, I love this one. He says, see, some of us, when you have a teacher that you think you know, you start getting relaxed. You think you know the teacher, so you think you can talk to them, and that's why you can't grow. That's why you stuck where you at, and you have not grown, because you thought, he's talking about the brother, you think you're close to the teacher. And what happened, I tell you what happened, you think you're close to the teacher. You start looking past what they're teaching. Like it don't, like it's not for you. I'm gonna say, so let me help you out. Don't shipwreck yourself to perceive that you know anybody that great. That you perceive that you can hear that what you, and I'm going to tell you, you go, you, go, you go to vision. God used someone to teach and you sit there and believe that God is talking to you something contrary to what they teach. You are rebellious and you also have a problem. You do. Because God does not speak contrary to his word. The Bible says, how can two walk together unless they Go ahead. Rather, they must serve all the better. Matter of fact, that's what he says. If you know them, that should inspire you to even want to serve God even greater. Why? Because if you know them, in, they, in their life, is that they have walked a life in God just before you, then it, you should want to serve them great, even greater. Why? Because you see it, you have seen it work. Amen. You have seen it manifest. Yes. Yes. In other words, he said you should serve them even more. The better. Why? Because you see, you know what they used to be. You know how to, you see what God has done in their life. So that means you should want to eat even more. You should be wanting to crave. You should be going after God harder, not less. When you look at when you look at uh, Pastor uh, Chris, uh, uh, when you see uh, Pastor Chris, uh, and you see what God is doing in his life, and you know you should be like, man, uh, if Eden did that for him, if Eden caused him to respond that way, if Eden caused him to be married, if Eden get me married twenty two years, oh, I'm eating that. See, the problem is you want to go eat with somebody who hasn't ate. You want to eat from somebody who don't eat from the wrong table. Jesus. But we like eating. This is this part. This part is good. This part is good. We like eating when it looks like it's going to be a uh, tangible game. But I'm about to show you something. Well, I want you to get this. If a man or woman God stand before you and preach the gospel. And you see the evidence of tangible gain. You want to eat to obtain the tangible gain. But that's not the gospel. I know y'all see. Y'all look at me like, I'm gonna show you. That's not the gospel. If you're eating, if the man of God, like I'm, like I'm saying, like let's say the man got up here. I, I, I've actually seen this. There's a man of God. He had a he had a big Lincoln um, Navigator. Navigator. When they first came out, this was some years ago. You know, y'all ain't hear about the Navigator now. I don't know what I'm going But years when it came out, he had a Navigator. He had got a huge home. And some people came. I went to the ministry. I was going to the ministry. And I, I was watching this. And the guys came in. And he, he would preach what God, what he was, what God had gave him. He, he was preaching about these things. He was preaching about these things. Everybody said, see, if I preach about these things, I'm shifting the gospel. See, I know y'all want to hear that. I'm, I, I am, because I'm telling you that it's about getting these things. And you watch it. If I preach that way, you're going to start thinking, well, if I get the gospel, I can get these things. But see, what you don't understand in the scripture, the Bible says, have no thought for what you should eat, drink, or wear. For God, for, and the Bible says, 
be not like the Gentiles, spend his whole life seeking out the things. So if I preach a gospel about things, what I'm going to do is have you start pursuing out the things. I'm going to show you in scripture what I'm saying. So the young, so watch this. So the drummer who was freshly married, what he did is he had a car and his wife had a car. He started telling his car, telling his wife, we need to get a, a, a car like Pastor. He started speaking to his wife as in reference to trying to obtain things so he can walk in the same power that his pastor was preaching. Yes. Yeah. See, I know this gospel is not going, but see, that's why when God taught me here, see, remember now, the Bible says, bring up a child in the way it should go a little when it's old. See, however you bring them up, they're not going to depart from it unless they get to live. See, the bottom line, if I bring you up thinking that things are important, come on, somebody. Some of us in this room, and this, this is not bad, I don't just say, some of us in this room, you were brought up believing that get your education. That education, come on, raise your hand if you know I'm telling the truth. Look at 90% of the people in this room. You were brought up, your parents told you that you need to get your education. Be a doctor, be a lawyer, be a teacher. Can I get a raise your hand? Amen. Amen. We were not, it was like, that's not bad. But if I teach that as a means of your identity, if I teach it as a means of you believing, that's what power is. If I teach that in a way to make that makes you feel like you have authority, then you will pursue it. In which we did. But let me ask you a question. We're gonna see if we don't have some people be honest in here. How many of us pursued after the thing that was repeatedly told to us that that made us somebody or important and still found yourself empty after you obtained? I didn't say you didn't feel good when you got it, but when you got it, you realized that the emptiness was what? You realized that that thing, then it brought a, it brought, it brought a temporary happiness, but it didn't bring a fulfillment of joy. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And I have to make sure I give you this the right way. It is, not, it is good to obtain. You want to move with a spirit of excellence. You want to get a master's degree. You want to get a doctor's degree. You want to get whatever you can obtain. That is good. Say that is good. That is good. But if you find your identity in that, and you perceive that you are somebody because you have accomplished that, people think they somebody. Because what you have obtained did not give you eternal life. So you stay in church still empty. Amen. Amen. Keep reading. Watch this. This is going to be good. Go ahead. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. Those who have. I'm sorry. I read that earlier. Mm -hmm. It's good enough to read again. <laughs> Rather, they must serve all the better, since those who benefit by their good service are believers and beloved. Who benefits from your godly living? Who benefits from your godly living? But the brethren do too. Because watch this. If I'm struggling in a certain area, your good living gives me strength. I benefit from you and you benefit from me. It becomes, how many of you know, it becomes discouraging to see people fall away. Go ahead. Teach and urge these things. He said, do what? Teach and urge these things. Listen to what he's saying to the pastors, the teachers, the evangelists. 
those who are going to equip the saints. He said, teach and urge these things. Why? Watch this. If anyone teaches a different doctrine, if anybody's teaching a different doctrine, and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and does not agree with the sound words of the one who sat, watch this, the one who sat down, and when he looked out, the one who sat down and said, those who, who, those who do the will of God shall be the mothers and the fathers and the mothers and the sisters and the brothers. Those who are in the family of God who are sitting down with the word of God. They're sitting down with the word of God. The Holy Spirit comes to bring all these to remembrance of who? Christ Jesus. So the Holy Spirit is not talking about himself. He's talking about Jesus Christ. He's bringing you in remembrance of the word of God. And that word of God is renewing your mind and changing your behavior. And it's beneficial to the brothers because how you used to act, you don't act no more. Suffrage is gone. Rule is gone. Now you are loving one another. The Bible says, let a man say, I'm going to paraphrase this. He says, when he has lost all, when he has lost all these things, let him not say he has, but he has gained more mothers, more, more, more houses. He's talking about family. See, we even took that scripture and made it seem like wealth. You know what he was talking about when he says, when a man think he lost everything? He has gained more houses and more than, he's talking about the bottom line, when you, have a, when you have a great family, you have always access to a place to go. Yeah. How do we know that's true? Because in the scripture says, when I'm thirsty, you give me the drink. When I'm hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I'm naked, you gave me clothes. So if I have a huge family, I shouldn't go hungry. Yeah. If I have a huge family of believers, I shouldn't be naked. Yes. Stop talking about the woman and how she dressed. Take a shot. Yes. Stop talking about how that brother or sister smell. Take them to and put them away at the end. Be the good Samaritan. Go to that store. But see, we ain't, no, no, that's, that's not the gospel we have been taught. It's the gospel we've been taught. We sitting there waiting for God to bless us. We can't. And the only reason we want to be a blessing to somebody else is because we expect something from it. But that's not godliness. That's not God. Watch this. We don't go ahead. Break it open. You better break it open. Go ahead. If anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound word of our Lord Jesus Christ uh -huh. and the teaching that accords with godliness. Okay, says so what? That in accords with godliness. So the teaching accords with what? Godliness. So the teaching of the word of God that he was sitting them down was accord with what? God in this. So the teaching that pastors and prophets and evangelists who are equipping the saints is in accord with God in this. In other words, it is producing in you the nature of God. It's producing in your talking, in your, your behavior. It's transforming you into godliness. Because watch this. You can make money without God. Come on now, y'all. Everybody in this room wasn't broke. I mean, some of y'all had, some of y'all like, I had money. I was making more money when I was when I wasn't saying, we don't want to ask you how you were doing that, but we, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We don't want to know. We just pray that you saved and delivered. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you, got of, you, got, you got rid of one of one dollar bills, you know what I'm saying? Whatever the job did. <laughs> no. So watch this. You had, you, many of us in this room, you had, before you got saved, you got your degrees, you, you worked hard, you worked up. So what was your problem? You ain't have no godly behavior. You, you couldn't stand a storm. Some of us quit jobs because you couldn't deal with somebody talking to you a certain way. Some of us quit on people and worked over people because you, you were building things crooked and perverted. You, you're not, this is the, the, the stability, the, the stability, 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 that you are now having in these situations, it ain't come from you. You're crazy. You actually think the stability in your relationships come from you. All you gotta do is go back and think about it. When you be oh, you met somebody, you didn't, you didn't have no stability in Why? Because you had a nasty attitude. You chose people that were ungodly. In other words, the, 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 the reason why you're having success right now in anything that you are doing is because the spirit inside of you is working in. You would have been a quit. You would have been a gay up. You would have been saying, I'm done and I'm done. But now the Holy Spirit inside of you, you would have been a cheat. But the Spirit inside of you is working and producing. I read that again. I want you to see. He said, teach this. He said, give them this. Because watch this. We got a church that look like they're walking in power. Can't be right. 
love each other, right? But it's not just the church. We're preaching a gospel that, 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 that we have inserted things in it that now has to for the things that we inserted instead of the word transforming you to walk in power in, in God in you. That's why you have people, they in church, they, they doing all this, but they can't stop sleeping with people. They, 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 want, they, they sing in the choir, they, they doing a lot of church stuff, but in the parking lot, they're cursing somebody out. They can't get rid of the anger. Because they don't understand that the word, when you water down the word, the word is, let every seed produce after its, let every seed produce after its, so if it's a, if, watch this, he came from heaven to earth. He came out of the bosom of God. So if he came out of the bosom of God, if you accept his seed, should he not be producing God in you? In your communication, your behavior, in faith, in purity, shouldn't God be making you walk pure? Shouldn't God be, shouldn't your communication be, I'm sorry, forgive me? I mean, come on. I know this. Now, you're going to be in a world where trying, you're going to be tried and tested. But guess what? You learn how to walk God's hands. That's how they're going to see God. Now, let me tell you, y'all are so good. When you drive a new car, the people that's driving, they don't see no, they got a new car too. They don't care nothing about you. You don't show them God because you got a car. Oh, God just got me a brand new house. So you live living next to a neighbor that's a Buddhist. Show me how you're going to impress them with your new house. But when the seed, when the spirit begins to produce in you the fruit of the spirit, and you know how to have self-control, when you know how to know how to have forgiveness, when you know how to be kind, when it's producing in you godliness, he just he said according to godliness, did he not? According, according to what? In accord to to, re, to 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 be strengthened, to be strengthened what? In godliness. The word that I'm preaching to you should be strengthened in you in godliness. Should be producing into you a godly behavior, a godly mindset. But we don't say no. We don't care about a godly behavior, a godly mindset. We just care about reading. He is puffed up with conceit. He said, when he don't preach it the right way, he puffed up. What is conceit? He's puffed up thinking it's about him. When he don't preach, when the gospel is not preached in a way that's producing godliness, and we add the person is puffed up, and it's about them. They're talking about look what God did for me. Look what God is puffed up, like they forgot that you are sinners saved by grace, yeah. and all the stuff that you have ain't got nothing to do with godliness. Go ahead. And understands nothing. He understands nothing. He don't. Watch it. What is he saying? We got teachers and investors who don't understand what God is really doing now. They don't understand the family. They don't understand what God is doing with the family. They don't understand that they, they are raising children. They don't understand what is really going on. And they don't understand how you raise your children is how they will behave. Go ahead. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy. He has an unhealthy craving for controversy. Why? Wow. I don't even know when it's about you. Controversy come in because you're going to be what? Defending everything about you. You will have to defend it. This controversy come in because you're defending yourself. Go ahead. Go ahead. And for quarrels about words. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Which produce envy. Produce envy. Watch this. In this. When the gospel is twisted, it produces envy. Why? Because there's the have and have nots. When the gospel is twisted, it produces envy because it has people perceiving they can't have what you have. So envy can in, but see, in the true gospel, whatever you got, I can get too. In other words, you don't have nothing more than I have because the same spirit in you, was the same spirit that raised you up, raised me up. You was dead and I was dead too. Amen. It, ain't about what, it ain't about the stuff you have because the stuff you have don't make you important. It's about the God you have. It's just the same God you got, I got too. I'm my envy. The same thing God gave you, he gave to me too. See, we don't make, see, some of us are envious about somebody who got married. Some of us are envious about, because you thought the gospel was about somebody getting a husband. So whatever you thought the gospel was about, when somebody get it, you become envious. But when you know that the gospel is about salvation, 
When you understand the gospel is about, about life being about what, becoming a daughter or a son, come on. When you realize the gospel is about you becoming a daughter or a son, why would you be envious? The same spirit that quickened me to have me cry out was the same spirit that quickened you to have you cry out. The same spirit that got you speaking in tongues, living me to have me. Come on now, somebody. The same spirit that pulled me out of home is the same spirit that pulled you out. I don't have to envy you out. Because the same spirit that woke me up now woke you up. The same ticket you got to go to heaven, I got that same ticket. But when you make it about anything else, it's going to become envious. Because why? If you make it about being married, then don't. Lord, you can hold it until I get ready. Yes, Lord. Go ahead, keep reading. Dissensions. Dissensions, go ahead. Slander. Slander. All these things happen when we twist the gospel. Y'all gotta get this because God is opening up the key to show you what's going on. We got distinction with this. We got our envy. We got all these things going on in the church. Why? Because we are pursuing something that wasn't God. See, the spirit is producing in me. He don't care if you're black, white, or red, or yellow. He loves you the same way you love me. And I can't boast at you and put you down. Why? Because I needed that same spirit to be able to love people that you need. It don't matter our financial status, because guess what? We was both dead in our sins. It don't matter our educational status. Why? Because the truth is we were both dead in our sins. There's nothing you can name to make you there's nothing that you can name that make you superior because there's nothing you can name to save your soul other than Jesus Christ. And the same Jesus you grab a hold to, so did I. Jesus didn't say, well, you know what? I'm gonna step beside you because you're black, but I'm not gonna step beside you because you're white. No, Jesus said, anyone who called my name. So preaching Christ. What's his court? What's his, what's, his, what's his lined up with God? In this, I heard the woman say, let's, not, let's be lined up. Preach Christ. Keep on. Watch this. Evil suspicions. Mm -hmm. Keep going. And constant friction among people who are depraved in mind and depraved of the truth. See, when they're depraved of the truth, when you start preaching, I'm going to tell you something. We can preach knowledge. Ooh, I'm going to tell you, I don't need Holy Spirit. See, that's why Paul said, I don't want to become up. you like, I'm all knowledge. Well, you know what? Like, I. With all this knowledge trying to make you get entangled in my knowledge because you will start thinking how much knowledge you get make you better than somebody. Oh, I got this. God is in contentment, meaning that be content wherever you might be in life. Because why? Because God, wherever you are, God, see, what's interesting about it, it's not going to make you. Now, wait, y'all got to get this. See, I know some of y'all think, wait. God will promote you. God will elevate you. But he doesn't see what contentment means. I'm content whatever God has me. Because, God, because the godliness that he produced in me has taught me how to be patient. It's taught me how to be long-suffering. See, people who are not content will do anything to get ahead. But people who are content knows that God will open up opportunities and you will open up situations. But God says, I have to mature you in who I am first. And if you're not content, y'all gotta get this. If you're not content, then that means you're anxious. And when you're anxious, you try to obtain things as a child that you can't handle. You try to obtain wealth because you're still like a child trying to find something that makes you feel important. And that's why you can't get the, your deliverance is, your deliverance is in your lack of understanding. You, you don't understand that it's not what you're trying to obtain. You can get there. You can, do, you can, get, to the, you can get to the highest level of what you think you still going to be empty. But God says, but if you learn how to be content, wherever you are, be content. The wherever God has, whatever God has, you will never be content. Why? Because godliness, because godliness, godliness produces the fruit to get you to be able to be joyful wherever you are. Amen. I don't have to get there to be joyful. The godliness inside of me, what God is developing, who He has made me be, will cause me to have joy in one house or two houses. Whoever He has, whatever He has created. 
add into it. Uh, this one, I'm, I'm, I'm about to show you what happened. This is what's happening today. The seed is falling up on the thorns. What's the thorns? The cares of this world and the sequence of riches has choked the word out of you. What does it mean? It's no longer producing godliness in you. And because now you're looking at somebody else, look how many, look how old, look how many, look how much they have. And now you're envious. And now you're jealous. And now you're angry because you don't have what you want. James talked about it. You don't have what you think you deserve. You don't have, so you're angry and you bitter. You think you deserve a better wife. You think you deserve a better husband. You think you deserve better. Because why? Because godliness is being choked out of you. Because you have, because why? Because you don't got to the place where you think you somebody. You don't got to the place where you think, I heard a man of God say it earlier, you have entitled it. You think, but let me tell you where your deception comes from. You are still seeking after a lie. You have been deceived to perceive that what you accomplish makes you who you are. So you are chasing. And that's why the thing that you are chasing has no power to deliver you. So you're not delivered because you're chasing something that you think if you had that, you're, what's it? You'll be better. Let me talk to you about idols. I, I, this morning I was, I'm, I'm meditating. Because I didn't come this morning. God said, I just want you to lay before my presence. I didn't come to, to, to divine this morning. I usually come and sit up there, but God says, no, I want you to sit home and I'm, and I'm, and I'm meditating. And God began talking to me about idols. And let me tell you something. The way he talked to me about it, it kind of messed me up. I'm like, really? He said, yeah, he said, let me show you. He said, he dealt with, he, he brought it to me with homosexuality. I thought, it, I thought it was so interesting how he brought it. He says, in homosexuality, the man, the woman is looking at a man as an idol. And a woman, a woman is looking at a man, and a man is looking at a woman as an idol. I'm saying, huh, God? He said, yes. He said, your idol is the thing you think if you have it, you'll be happy. This is what homosexuals say. If I get this, I'll be happier than where I'm at. Because I feel this, I feel that. So whatever I feel, if I get this, he says, an idol is the thing that you create. And he said, watch this. And when you begin to worship your idol, it begins to transform you to the thing that you think will make you happy. I'm just telling you what he showed me. He said, and he took me to Romans. He said, they changed the truth into a lie and began to worship the creature more than the creator. There are things that we feel that'll make us happy. Even as children, people I was born, people born, people born with music, loving music. And they think if I get this, it'll make me happy. So they begin to worship it. And when they begin to worship it, it begins to transform them. But I want to tell you something. It's the same thing with let's say a man. He, he like women, 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 some of you like women, women, and he thinking, if I obtain enough women, I'm going to be happy. This will satisfy me. This will complete me. This is what they say. This is what we say in our heart. This will satisfy me. This will complete me. This will make me who I am. But if you ask any person who pursued after their idol, what they found out is that while they were pursuing, they were still broken. Yes, yes. They were still hurt. They were still angry. They were still, in other words, what they pursued after that they thought would make them happy had no power to change them. I'm just telling you what God showed me. When you make an idol, it, it may, he, he, say, he says, he says, animals, oh, he's animals. He doesn't say a man. When you pursue after something other than what God has gave you or what God has established, and you say in your heart, this is what you say in your heart, if I have this, I'll be good. I'll be who I really am. That is called deception. 
and he gets us to pursue after something that's contrary to what God has said. And we think we're going to be happy when we obtain it, but it was a deceit. It was deception. If I could just pursue, that's why, if I could just get millions of dollars, greed, more and more, they pursue after it and then find out what they got couldn't change their heart. God says, I have to cast down men's idols. The image that they perceive, if I had that and became that, I'll be good. He said, this is how he gave it to this one. He said, they say it in their heart. We say in our heart, if I can have that, if I can become that, I'll be all right. I'll be happy then. No, your flesh will be happy. But you shall surely die in your sin. And all God does to do, all God does is when we call on him and we accept him as family, he just begins to open your eyes to truth. And truth begins to meet the lie, and now you're in warfare. What warfare? To what you thought would make you happy, to where true joy is. Are we getting this? Look at some say, look at somebody, cast down your idols. Because we got a world full of people who saying, if I could just get this, if I could just get a bigger house, if I could just get this, I'm going to be happy when I get this. I'm going to be all right when I get this. You're going to be deceived. You should be all right with God. When you have God, you already have. Amen. You already have joy. Why? Because see, it's taking you from death into life. Keep going. We about to finish it up. What, what verse are you on? Okay, keep going. Verse 7. For we brought nothing into the world. He said you brought nothing into the world. And we can take nothing out of the world. So why get attached to something you can't take with you? Why sell your whole life for something when they put you in that coffin? You ain't, let me tell you, you spent your whole life making money. I promise you, you ain't taking a dime with you. So be generous. See, when you with God, what you obtain, you use to help other people. When it's about you, you just obtain it to make you feel like something. Like a man who built a barn. So he said, I'm going to tear down this barn and I'll make it bigger. He said, you fool, I call upon your soul tonight. You trying to build something for you and not even... Keep going. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. But if we have food and clothing, if we have food and clothing, with these we will be content. With these we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich will fall into temptation. But and those who have a desire to be rich, watch this, shift your desire. Amen. See, I know, watch this, people think I'm tripping when you say this, that's the word. They're like, no, no, you can't. You tell me, this word saying you shouldn't have, no, those who desire to be rich. Because remember now, your desire versus God's desire. Because whatever your desire, and I'm about to say, I can feel it in the spirit. Some of you in your mind, you're fighting against this because you perceive. Now watch it. Can God make you rich? Yes, he can. When you learn how to be content and God knows you, he can, but you and I watch it. But that ain't, that's not your desire. When, it, cause what, watch, when something is your desire, you're spending everything you need to get there. You're doing all you can to achieve it. You, God is on the back burner. God is secondary. Well, maybe not your secondary. Well, you, when you desire something, with your whole heart, mind, and soul going after it. And you only pacify God because you have to. God knows what your true desire is. But see, when you read this verse, you are a theologian. They'll, they'll, they'll try to shift that verse and say, no, that, they don't really mean it. There's nothing wrong with desiring to be rich. No, it's nothing wrong with being rich. Desire to please God. There's nothing wrong with being rich, but let your desire be to please God. Go ahead. Into a snare, 
and into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Look what happens. He says, when you desire it, when your desires shift from God, it opens the door for other desires. See, you wonder why you still, why we still, why? Your desire wrong. See, you have to shift your main desire, so therefore you have the door open for other desires. Because once you open the door, you can't determine what's going to come in. And see, you won't denounce that you do have a desire for something more than God, and so you won't denounce it. And since, and what, that's the root of your other desires. And you wonder, why can't you get rid of this? Why can't you stop doing this? Why? Because you won't kill your main desire. You won't turn God into it. Because watch it. If you pursue God, if you pursue God like you pursued your desires, come on somebody, somebody gonna be with me on this. If you pursue God, if you think, wait a minute, if you spent half the time with God that you spent pursuing your desires, you would crush the enemy will be crushed in every thought pattern in your life. Somebody else's bedroom. It'll have you lying and cheating. He's saying it right in the word. God's your desire. Read what your desires open up again. For those, for those who desire to be rich will fall into temptation, into a snare and into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. The cares of this world, deceitfulness, and we preaching it from the pulpit. We preaching it from the pulpit and got you chasing after things without even chasing. You don't even want to chase God. You don't even want God because you want that car and house. And you want that stuff, you want notoriety, you want to be blowed up, you want your, you want your record deal. You're chasing God for riches. We prophesying to you everything but the kitchen sink. And we'll give you that too if that make you turn. But where is godliness? Where are the children who want godliness? Where are the young girls who want to be like the father? Where are the young men who want to be like the father? I don't, I don't want God, I just want to use God. Well, God is shifting. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I, I feel it being birthed in. He said, He's shifting. He said, You're going to know my church. God showed me I had a dream. Yeah, I had a dream. I had a dream, Bob. I had a dream. And God showed me a church. And he showed me that the church had a revolving roof. And the church was being moved. The roof was being cut, pulled back. And then I saw, 
I'm talking and you're walking down the aisle and there's a strange man that seemed weird and he was peculiar. But then I saw something old building another house. And I was surprised that it was building another house. I saw an ex, an old, something old building a, a new See, see God is, what God was saying, I'm about to uncover that people are building out of their old nature. They're building out of their old nature. They're building out of the things as if they have forgotten it was God who saved them. As they've forgotten that Jesus Christ is Lord of Lord and King of Kings. And they're doing this. Why are they doing it? Because they want to entice the people. They want to get the people excited. They want the people to see them. They want to show up in front of the people. But I don't, I don't, I don't care. See Jesus. See Jesus. Follow me as I follow Christ. Because Jesus said, I gave up. He said, if he said, I counted, Jesus gave up heaven. He came up, he gave up heaven, came to earth. He gave up all. They, there's nothing down here to be compared to heaven. He gave up everything that was rich. Ain't no mansion down here to compare up to heaven. Ain't no, ain't no gold and silver compared to heaven. But he came down here. He surrendered everything up there to come out here to win a soul. We down here trying to get everything and let souls go free. People broken in the world, but we sitting here talking about when, when my marriage day, when I'm getting my house, when I'm getting my car. And God said, where are my people at? Where are my people who are called by my name? The church can't get healed because we ain't got nobody who will lay We're too busy laboring for our own desires. Too busy, too busy worshiping our own idols. But God says, no more. He said, come back to me as a child. Come back to me. Stop putting my Bible down and not picking it up until Friday. Eat, drink. That's why I tell you, man, New Year's, New Year's, um, we're not gonna have, we're gonna, we're gonna go to our, our y'all get the address, we're going to our uh, church on New Year's, we're gonna meet at the church on New Year's like we normally do, we're gonna go, but we're gonna meet another church on New Year's. Um, and the day after New Year's, we're gonna do a 21 day fast. Ooh. And I'm gonna, it's gonna be mixed with a consecration. Consecration. I see some of y'all right now, but your flesh just, your flesh just threw a loop, boy. Your flesh just threw a loop. Your flesh just threw a loop. Don't worry about it, it's gonna be veggies. Who them? It's gonna be fish. You're gonna be able to have veggies. I'm just, I'm, I'm, uh, um, God will give more guidance and direction on it. But you know what? Uh-uh, we constitute, you don't understand, y'all don't understand. 2019 gonna be different. Yeah. It's time for your desires to go. Yeah. It's time for God in this to be good. It is time for God to be seen upon the earth. Yeah. Amen. Amen? It's time for God in this. You know what I'm saying? God in this to change people's lives. Godliness has the power. You know when the woman had the issue of blood, she reached out, the Bible says she reached out and she touched the hem of his garment. You know what the Bible says? The virtue. Virtue is godliness. The Bible says virtue means moral excellence. The godliness in him flew out. He, he knew that something that somebody had touched him with faith. When you touch this, yeah, I gotta get this. He knew that someone had touched him in faith. When you touch God in faith, it's what virtue, moral excellence flies out of you. you touch, when you read, what am I telling you? When you get past all my, when you don't try everything else, when you get to him and you humble yourself and you try God, when you touch him, when you truly touch God, watch this, he will drop up the issues in you. When you truly trust God, who he is, who he is, patience, his kindness, his love, will drop the issues up in you. But you got to humble yourself and touch him. Your highest height is still at its foot. 
How do I know? He said he make the foot, he make the earth the foot his footstool. Your highest height to God gonna still end up his foot. My God. That was it. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evils. Watch this. Money is not evil. The love of money. Why? Because whatever you love, you're going to pursue. He said, the love of money. money. Having money is not evil. But to love it, whatever you love, you will pursue. You will make an idol. But love God. He told me, how shall we into food? How do we know in the kingdom? He said, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. He said, you're almost there in the kingdom. God, I want to love you with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. God, I want to love you. See, the truth in this room, and I pray, we're going to be, I pray, man, I feel the Holy Spirit in this place. I know he's present. Some of us, we have to repent because you don't love God. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my word. In other words, you will do it. But see, we love. And listen, God knows that some of us, we were brought up a certain type of way. And we've been brought up, and God says, I want to make you new. But God can't change you until you start confessing that the fact that this. Uh-uh, God, this ain't like you. I, I, I want to be more like you. I denounce God my way, and I want to accept your way. So if you sit here tonight, come on. Let your beginning become, let your beginning be the night. Come like a child. Humble yourself like a child. Come, my God. You know what I say to God sometimes? I be like, God, I don't know what you want to talk about today. I do. I have to tell God, I don't know what you want to say to your people today. I don't know how to handle this. I found out people who always say, I don't know, are people who, who will find themselves growing a lot. People who always say, I know. I know. I know. God be like, I didn't come for the righteous. Because you know. But you know what I found out? You can be walking with God for 23 years and you ain't even begin to touch the very essence of all who he is. So I want to tell you today, I'm going to tell you something. Don't walk, I got who I hear this week. Don't walk up to this altar if you're not serious. Don't walk up to this altar unless you're really understanding what God is saying to you today. No more just walking up to the altar because you, because tonight you need to understand what God is saying. You got, when you walk up to this altar, you're saying, God, I'm coming like, I'm coming like a child. God, I understand I'm coming like a child. I'm coming to learn. I'm coming, Father God, to want, and I'm coming with one purpose. I want to drink from you. I want to eat from you, God. I want, God, I, 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 I'm putting everything else to the side. God, I'm putting everything to the side. You, I'm putting, God, I'm, see, the thing about it is, see, you know what you're going to keep pursuing, but I'm going to tell you something. You can come now, or you can come at the man of God say, or you can come when it destroys you. Because the Bible says, oh, it's going to bring you to your destruction. It's going to bring you to your destruction. I'm not trying to scare you, but i got to keep you in line with the scripture. Because some of us, God is saying, we're pursuing the wrong thing. We're pursuing the wrong thing. And God says, I want you to turn your desires over. Give up your desires for my desires. God says, I don't, it's not that God, God has given you gifts. Some of us, you'll have talents and gifts. And God is not going to take your talents and gifts from you. But when you get to that place, come on somebody, when you get to that place where you say, God, I know I have talents and gifts, but what I really want is you. What I really need is you. When I really, I come tonight, God, I come tonight in the name of Jesus. I heard the Bible says the day you hear the word, heart, not your heart, but allow that word to get into your heart and come to God and say, God, if I don't do nothing else, God, I need you. I come open the mind. You know what the Bible says? When they heard the word preach, the Bible said they were pricked to their heart. And guess what they said when they were pricked? They said, what must I do? That's a child. They said, what must we do? They didn't try to come and say, okay, I, well, you know what they said? They told me to bring some dove. They said, what must I do? Some of us need to get to that. God, what must I do? What must I do, God? And then begin to tell them, I mean, no. When you come to God and say, what must I do? You don't
in the spirit. You take it off on training wheels, oh glory. Hallelujah. I see the training wheels coming off. Ah, the training wheels. Ah, you've been having dreams about 